Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you what an artificial atom looks like. This is actually a man-made atom, also called a quantum dot. So let me explain why these are called artificial atoms. So I have here some vials of cadmium telluride. Now cadmium telluride is just a semiconductor material. It looks like this. Here's a large crystal of it. You'll notice that it's black looking. But what's interesting is that in these vials, all of them don't look black. And then this is actually the exact same type of crystal as this larger one. The only difference is these are really small pieces of cadmium telluride. And when I say small, I mean small. So the little tiny pieces of cadmium telluride in here are actually only a few nanometers in diameter. Now you'll notice that these are all different colors. Now the really crazy thing about this is that the only difference between these is the size of the particles in here. So let me mix these with some water so that you can see the difference in these colors here. Okay, so now watch the color of these when I hit them with UV light. So what's crazy about these different vials now is that these don't actually contain different materials. They're all exactly the same material. They're cadmium telluride, all of them. The only difference between these is the size of particles in here. These have the largest particles and these have the smallest particles. So the range of cadmium telluride on this end is around six nanometers in diameter, and on this end, it's around two nanometers in diameter. Two nanometers, that's around the scale of molecules. So in a normal atom, the reason that a specific atom has a specific color of light that it emits is because that atom only has certain energy levels that its electrons can get pushed to. So if um, some light hits an atom, it can knock the electrons up to a higher energy level, and when it finally falls back down, it only emits light of a specific wavelength when it falls back down, and that's the color of that atom. For example, a sodium vapor lamp is only emitting a wavelength of light at a specific frequency based on the electron levels of sodium. And what's interesting about these quantum dots is even though they're not individual atoms, they're probably a few dozen atoms in diameter, they act like individual atoms still. So what happens for these quantum dots is when UV light hits them, the UV light can knock electrons out of the outer shell of the semiconductor material so it enters the conduction band, so it's a conductive electron now, but then that electron can fall back down and re-emit light. But the quantum dots are so small that those electrons only fall down a specific um, energy level and it only re-emits a very specific wavelength of light when it falls back down. If the material is bigger, then there's lots of different energy levels for that electron level to fall back down. And so a typical semiconductor material doesn't emit only one wavelength of light. So basically what that means is if you limit the size of that material to very small, you can very specifically tune the wavelength of light that comes off of that material. So what's amazing about this is you don't have to search for a specific dye or pigment that has the wavelength of light that you want. You can actually just specifically tune the exact wavelength of light that you want just by changing the particle's diameter. So I've arranged these in order here. The one on the end is 670 nanometer light coming off of it, plus or minus only five nanometers. This one's 650 nanometer light, this one's 610 nanometers, 570 nanometers, and 510 nanometers. Now being able to define one specific wavelength of light that comes off a material is really important in lots of different scientific applications. But even in non-scientific applications, it's really important too, like in your TV. So because of the ability of quantum dots to very specifically tune the wavelength of light they emit, they're being used in TVs to be able to portray very vivid colors now. 
So these QLED TVs have been introduced in CES for a few years now, and they're starting to hit the market. One of the only downsides of these quantum dot TVs though, is that these are made of cadmium telluride. Now cadmium is extremely toxic. Fortunately, cadmium telluride isn't as toxic. And so these quantum dots aren't very toxic. You don't want to drink them or anything or get it on your skin, but they're not as toxic as cadmium. But if you change the pH levels and change the oxidation states, some cadmium can precipitate out of that. And cadmium is very toxic. And so you don't want this to be in landfills. So the question is, what do we do with these QLED TVs once we dispose of them? But you can make these quantum dots out of different semiconductors that aren't as dangerous. I'm interested to see where the development of these QLED TVs goes from here, but it's really interesting how specific of a wavelength we can get with these quantum dots. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you liked it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell so you can be notified when my latest videos out. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.